Bin Laden was killed by an elite U.S. fighting force. The Navy SEALs carried out the military's toughest assignments. And ABC 15's Jay Reynolds spoke to a Valley mom who knows firsthand about the risks the SEAL teams face every day. I think of him every single day, and I'm so proud of him and the sacrifice that he made. Debbie Lee lost her son Mark August 2, 2006, and she blames Osama Bin Laden. He's the reason that I don't have my son anymore. She joined many others around the country celebrating news of the Al-Qaeda leader's death. My arms went up. I was hooping. I was hollering. I, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It was um, justice was served. To hear the Navy SEALs carried out the mission touched her heart. Since Mark's death, those soldiers are her adopted family. So I'm proud today to stand with the Navy SEALs and tell them thank you. Thank you for what you've done. But Debbie told me there's still a long road ahead. It's not over. We got the leader, uh, but there are so many others that will step up, that will fill that plate. And she warns the terrorists better watch out. This sends a strong message to them, though. We will find you, we will hunt you down, and we will bring you to justice, just as we did with Osama bin Laden. The mission to get Osama, pride in her heart for her son Mark and the other Navy SEALs who fought with him. In Phoenix, Jay Reynolds, ABC 15 News. It's no secret looking at this home in surprise. Here lives a family forever connected to the Navy SEALs. Debbie Lee's son, Mark, was the first Navy SEAL killed in Iraq back in 2006. So how did she take the news that Osama bin Laden had been killed? <gasps> really? Oh, my goodness. And then the next moment was screams and yells and the fists up in the air and the jumping up and down. Just ecstatic. The death of the personification of the war on terror is enough for Debbie to be satisfied. But the fact that it was her adopted sons of the Navy SEALs, her son Mark's brothers in arms, who took down the world's most infamous terrorist, well, it's a type of vindication for this family. When those Navy SEALs went in there, and the last thing that o Osama saw, it was those guns from those warriors down his face saying, this is America, this is, you know... We found you. We found justice. Mark's final letter home talked of a larger mission, one of peace and hope. Debbie believes those ideals will take hold in a world now rid of a mass murderer. I feel like uh, Mark is with me, and uh, he's just up there cheering me on, saying, Go, Mom, keep making a difference. The first Navy SEAL killed in action overseas in Iraq, and to find out that a group of Navy SEALs uh, took Osama bin Laden out. Oh, your thoughts? Oh my goodness, I could not believe the different emotions that I went through last night. But uh, I had a friend text me that said, we got Osama. And I, I said, seriously? And my other son was there and I said, Chris, turn the news on quickly. And we heard them say that yes, in fact, they had captured him and that he had been killed. And I started just hooping and hollering and tears started coming to my eyes. And just the, to think of my son and the sacrifice that he made, and to feel like there was a little bit of justice that had been served. And I was so proud um, of Mark, of what he'd done, but I was so proud of our military who's serving. And uh, somehow in my heart, even before they announced it, when I listened to the details, I said, that's my boys, that's the Navy SEALs that are in there that have captured him. And that was, in fact, the case. You know, you've got a special bond with the SEALs, and I know you call them your adopted sons. Um, to think that they were responsible for this, is there a good chance you probably know some of these guys? There's a very good possibility that I do knew, know some of those um, guys that have been involved in this. I've been blessed. Uh, I used to say I had 21 adopted sons, and I remember getting an email from one of the East Coast SEALs, and I had sent out information about uh, what Mark had done and some of the other events I'd been involved in and he wrote back and he said um, Mama Lee you made a mistake and I'm like oh my gosh I've been telling Mark's story for years w what part of it do I have wrong right. and he said you don't have 21 adopted sons you have 2,000 oh wow and I thought wow Christmas is going to be expensive this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you kind of cut back a little bit. I know you've met uh, former President Bush who mm -hmm. called the Navy SEALs the elite of the elite. That's I know right. how proud you are. Um, even to this day uh, of your son, uh, what do you think that we need to remember as Americans in terms of the fact that, you know, Osama bin Laden is one man, um, Al-Qaeda and many? Yeah, the war on terror is still out there, you know, and we need to continue to pray for our troops that are over there now. This is the time of year in Afghanistan when it starts to warm, a lo uh, warm up a little bit, and things go crazy over there naturally. And I'm sure with the news that they've received, you know, Al-Qaeda and Taliban are going to try to attack harder. And um, our men and women 
in the military sacrificed so much for the freedoms that we enjoy each and every day. And we need to not forget them. You know, we need to make sure that we're taking care of the families that are left behind. And I know that's what America's Mighty Warriors uh, does uh, as well. I know you have a, a benefit coming up in August uh, in San Diego near the Navy SEALs Training Center. We do. Actually, Mark's buried over in Fort Rosecrans, and on August 2nd, uh, that will be the five-year anniversary of his death. And they are dedicating the uh, training center there at the SEAL base where all of the SEALs go through before they're deployed, wow. and it will be the Mark A. Lee Training Center. How interesting. Your son, Mark, uh, lost definitely <clears throat> too soon at the age of, what, yeah. 20? 28. Six, 28 years old, um, first SEAL killed in action, and now we hear that a group of SEALs, Kaylee and Scott, mm -hmm. are responsible for the death of Osama bin Laden. Um, Debbie Lee, we appreciate you joining us, and I want to encourage folks to check out their website, AmericasMightyWarriors.org. They do a lot for the military families around the country. It makes yeah. us so proud. So it really absolutely. does. Thank you. A military mom, Debbie Lee, feels a special pride in what the Navy SEALs accomplished during their mission to take down bin Laden. That is because her son was a Navy SEAL. Mark Allen Lee was the first SEAL to die in Iraq back in 2006. Now his gold star mom wants the Obama administration to reconsider its stance on interrogation, saying the military should be able to do whatever it takes to secure our freedom. Debbie Lee joins us from Phoenix, Arizona. She's the founder and president of America's Mighty Warriors, a nonprofit started in honor of her son. Debbie, thank you so much for joining us on this Mother's Day. You bet. Thank you for having me. You know, when we talk about interrogation techniques, very often it's seen as a political discussion. Uh, one administration having a very different stance than another administration, different lawmakers taking different stances. But for you, this is very, very personal. You know, what are your thoughts on this administration and their current policies when it comes to interrogation? Yes, it is very personal, and I've taken the, the lead on making sure that Gitmo stayed open and it's just appalling to me. Uh, I rejoice. I'm so proud of my Navy SEAL sons and uh, Mark and the sacrifices of all of the men and women who have given their lives fighting the terrorists. And we watched uh, when Obama campaigned, he was adamant about closing Gitmo, about closing the secret CIA prisons, which he did accomplish with the CIA prisons. But to see now that we're rejoicing and that we've captured Osama and taking him out, Yet the tactics that were used to do that were the ones that he vigorously campaigned against, and that is just not acceptable. And, you know, I have to get your reaction to that. What did you think when you heard that Osama bin Laden had been killed and that Navy SEALs had been the ones to finally accomplish that? I tell you what, when I found out, um, I started shaking with just uh, relief, with justice, um, I remember hooping and hollering, and it was unreal, the range of emotions that I went through, to know that we finally captured the leader of these terrorists who have attacked our nation, who have attacked the world, who have been responsible for the death of so many of our men and women who have given so much. And then to know that it was my adopted boys, Mark's teammates, those Navy SEALs, that um, hold such a special, dear place in my heart. I was so proud of all of them. I just had hoped that Mark would have been here to be able to rejoice, but you know, somehow I think there was some heaven intelligence involved in that mission. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, and you're right. That's the one thing that everybody seems to manage to agree on is that the Navy SEALs did a fabulous job here and that they deserve a lot of credit. Um, CIA Chief Leon Panetta had acknowledged uh, earlier last week in an interview that interrogation techniques, enhanced interrogation techniques, were used to gather information to find Osama bin Laden. Uh, and your concerns also have to do with protecting our intelligence community and their jobs, right? We do. You know, it's amazing what our intelligence does. It's amazing what our troops do. Every morning we wake up and enjoy the freedoms that we have because of our men and women who have served in the military, because of the CIA community, because of the intelligence community. And I'm so grateful for each one of them. And we need to make sure that they are equipped with what they need to be successful over there. We need to not be sending the terrorists back into the battlefield to attack our men and women again. We need to find that information in the methods that need to be done that will get that information out from them. We've just seen the success of that, how they did that down in the CIA prisons in Guantanamo, that they received that information to be able to capture Osama. And we need to allow them to do that successfully to protect our troops, to protect American citizens. And Debbie, before we go very quickly, I want to give you a chance to talk a little bit about Mark and, and how he became a Navy SEAL and, and what he meant and what his career in the military meant to him. 
Um, that was a young man that was filled with perseverance, determination, uh, had an amazing sense of humor, but had a huge heart. You know, so often we picture our Navy SEALs as these macho, tough warriors, which they are, but they're balanced men that have a compassionate side, that have a caring side, uh, that are intelligent, and that's who Mark was. He made the choice. He was trying out for a professional soccer team in Colorado, blew his knee out the night before tryouts, and came home to recuperate, and during that time, he'd always wanted to be a Navy SEAL. I think every young man that watches the movies about the SEALs, that you know, they're the good-looking guys that get the girls, and they're on the edge <laughs> of battle all the time in the movies. But um, I don't know that I took him serious when he began that at first. But then as he began to study, he read autobiographies. He started preparing physically. He knew exactly what it took. He be, began preparing mentally. And uh, that young man, the first time that he went through BUDS, uh, during Hell Week, he got pneumonia and pulmonary edema. And they do med checks on him. And they did a med check and said, we got to yank you. You've got to start over again. He said, no, 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 I'm good. I'm good. I can do this. They said, no, we lost one of the SEALs two classes ago with exactly what you have. And he so persevered, he all, and he got it done. He, he persevered, started all over again, and um, ended up being in running man, uh, running for honor man of his platoon. He, he didn't get honor man, but um, an amazing young man with determination and fortitude. You know, he willingly stood out in the direct line of fire three times the day he was killed. Uh, I've been over to Iraq. I saw the area. He could have stayed below the wall. He could have waited for backup. His buddies probably would have been killed, but Mark would have been with me today celebrating Mother's Day. But that wasn't who that young man was. He valued other people's lives more important than his own, and he made the choice to willingly give up his life so that his buddies could live, so that we could have the freedoms that we enjoy each and every day in America. And Debbie, and I want to so thank grateful. you so much this Mother's Day for coming on and talking about your son and sharing his absolutely incredible story uh, you know his sacrifice thank you as a mom for bringing him into the world and raising him in a way that he was willing to serve this country so thank you and, and happy Mother's Day thank you I'm blessed to be his mother and blessed to be the mother Christopher and Cheryl also thank you so much thank you Debbie